And so we thank Almighty God for his coming and intervening in our affairs in the person of Master Farad Muhammad because we can follow a word, but the word didn't write itself. Somebody had to write it. And before it was written, somebody had to think it. That takes a brain. And it takes a heart of love to share a word that has the power to deliver. You ain't going to make it out of this world trying to follow the word. That's why Jesus said, you search the scriptures believing that in them you have eternal life but they only testify of me. We're thankful to Master Farad Muhammad for his wise choice in a messenger, Messiah, to us, lost in the wilderness of North America, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. And... Um, to the two of them, I stand before you eternally indebted for their apostle and servant and student, my leader, teacher, and guide, the Honorable Louis Farrakhan. And so I greet you uh, once again in the Nation of Islam, salutation of peace in the language and tongue of our Father, Salaam Alaikum. Well, um, the most I can say is it's on now. I don't think it's going to turn off till this whole thing is over. If you've ever studied, if you've ever soldiered, if you've ever trained, this is a time to reach for it. Because that's all you got going for you. The world doesn't have anything for you for this kind of fight. The teaching and training for the kind of fight we in now could only be found in Muhammad's temples. This is spiritual warfare. It's a war of ideas. And which one's going to prevail? Um, years ago, the Honorable Louis Farrakhan was on the Donahue Show. And uh, he gave a perfect example yes, sir. Yes, sir. of how to respond when Yaqub's children try to break you down in the public to make you go after your brother or sister. We learned it, at least I did, early on as an FOI. If somebody comes to you about something about someone else of your own family, Bring all the parties together. See, we've gotten so used to slack talk and gossip that we ain't even prepared for this fight now. So when the enemy went to Congressman Danny Davis, Congresswoman Barbara Lee and others, all they had to say was if I have a problem, with something that Minister Louis Farrakhan said, I'll call him and talk to him about it. But I won't talk to you about it in the public about him. Simple rule. What right do they have to come into our family and tell us who we should be with and who we should not be with? Not one Jew has ever condemned another Jew for what Jews have done to us. Jews met with Minister Farrakhan. And not one Negro leader called them to the carpet about it. But you let them call you. See, we're not ready for this fight. Because they already shown us that the black world doesn't have any discipline. 
Jagger Hoover was able to exploit our weakness in struggle and cause the organizations to all start rumbling with each other. It's an old trick from the plantation. Take one of the Negroes from the field and just put him in the house. That'll start a mess right there. You eating grits, and he got some fried chicken and a biscuit, and you having a damn fit. When he didn't put himself there, your master put him there. So if we're going to learn how to fight, all we got to do is say, if I have a problem with someone else saying something that looks like me, I'm going to call them and talk to them. I don't need to talk to you. What do you have to do with it? So there's a lot out there coming out. It's going to keep pouring out because they're going to keep going to people now. But when are we going to go to some people? And demand something from them. See, we're still a managed social group. So we in the fight now. And what the minister did, everybody think that it was the Savior's Day address. That just gave them an opportunity. It was Watergate. And the press conference has got him. That's why we're studying what he said in the press conference because they're studying it. That's why Trump is not tweeting about it. Now he tweet about everybody. You, you should have caught that. But he won't tweet about Minister Louis Farrakhan. You know why? Because there ain't nothing to joke about. And you can't wrap up and sum up Minister Louis Farrakhan in a 142 characters. Our executive council has sent out uh, a letter and has resurrected another letter already put out by the minister to black leadership. You can't get Minister Farrakhan. I'm talking about some white person. You can't get him to accommodate you to condemn one of his brothers or sisters in any other organization, any other church, any other masjid. So on the Donahue show, they tried to get him to condemn Eddie Murphy. What did he tell him? Eddie Murphy is my brother. If I have a problem with Eddie Murphy, I'll call Eddie Murphy about it. But I won't use your show as a platform to talk about my brother. That's all we got to practice. But we're so used to gossiping. And we're so used to talking about people, but we can't face the people that we're talking about. So they can get us like this. So now, as it rolls out, and our little sister, Tamika Mallory, I called her because I've worked with her before. And you know, she's, she's fine. She's not falling apart like some of these others. I was reading somewhere in the scripture where it got to a point where Jesus said some things and the people were offended. And I think uh, in the sixth chapter of John in the 66th verse, that's 666. It says, uh, whatever happened, it says, and from that time they walked with him no more. So that means something's going to come up that's going to be offensive. Right. 
It's already started with some people. But the minister, Savior's Day, has cataloged who his enemies are. We knew the government was his enemy. We knew the Jews was his enemy. But he's added something now. Scared to death Negroes are on the list now. And weak-minded Muslims. So don't come to me just talking about we Muslim and we together. Let me check your mind out. And the litmus test is Louis Farrakhan. If you're around talking about he ain't no real Muslim, that's a weak position. So the fight is on now. But the battle, the honorable Elijah Muhammad said, is in the sky. It's for the, so while you waiting to do this, he done took your mind. You end up using your hand against your brother rather than your enemy. We're not ready for this fight. Black people have neglected their training. And we are not ready for this fight. A new angle is that the minister wronged Brother Collett. Because Collett was fighting the Jews and the minister took him off his pose. Now the minister is seemingly attacking the Jews. So why was Collett relieved? See what I'm saying? So now people who were in the ranks are thinking the minister is using a double standard. They're using every trick they got in the book now. This is the devil's playbook. And if you ain't thinking on your feet, you'll stumble over this one. And I'm sure The Honorable Louis Farrakhan is sitting back just watching. He's not even gone yet. Stuff done hit the fan. He mentioned something over the Savior's Day weekend again about our foundation. And um, how strong it is. You know, you can have a foundation, I learned, and, and the foundation can be strong. But if you got a builder that's cutting corners, because I heard two things hurt a structure, a weak foundation or a strong foundation, and you build them with inferior material. Farrakhan's preaching for us is a strong foundation. But if you're standing on that with some weakness that you want to pass off as Islam, taught by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, you're building with inferior material. What he has given us as a word from the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, he said everything we need is in there. You can't uh, name me something that you're entitled to as a righteous person that we can't point toward the word and the word can't get it for you. Because if it can't, what are we doing with it? If the word of God can't help us, why would I even be entertaining it? We got 
what we need to win the fight. We have what we need to win it, but we have to, we have to be ready to use it. And we got to trust it. God got to be put first in all our plans. You got to stop doing this on your own. Biggest mistake we've made is we thought we could love God on our own. Without God's spirit, you can't love him like he needs to be loved. You ain't got enough. And if you're going on your love alone, then you're loving God on your own term. You can't even keep a wife or a husband like that. People want you to love them the way they want to be loved. You think God is different? You need his spirit to help you to love him right. Um, we want to talk some more um, on the breakdown of the black world. Uh, we, we tried to lay out some things that we didn't really flesh out. Um, well, why, why are you talking about the black world and the breakdown in the history and everything? Because I think we need to get a picture of what we're standing on. Like, if you standing with Minister Louis Farrakhan, what are you standing on? See, ultimately, to be a disciple of Jesus it's not about being committed to the word or principle or cause. It's about being committed to the man. And that means you believe that man is the embodiment of those principles. God's instrument for his cause. And so when I commit myself to him, because that's who they're attacking. They're not attacking the word. Not that they know of. They're not attacking principles of Islam. Not that they know of. So why y'all defending Farrakhan? He's the embodiment of that. You ain't living it. But he's living it. He's the only human being on the planet right now. That is completely uninvolved with present world corruption. Your and my enemy has to corrupt everything. He's outnumbered on the planet 11 to 1. He can't master you unless he blinds you to who you are. The honorable boy Elijah Muhammad said, if you stick with me, I have you so smart, he'll be wrapped around your bed. You'll be managing him. No, we need to go down and protest. What? So you can get in his house, you can build your own house. And give him a room like we started out anyway. Yaqub knew you couldn't go among the original people and just build your own house. So he said, rent a room in their house. They're awake now, he says, so you, you can't just go build next to them and do gentrification. They too wise for that. So I'm going to tell you, don't start out too big. Get inside, just rent a room. They're, they're kind people. They're righteous people. They'll take you in. They'll give you a room. Then by the time you go to the store to get some more provisions, they done change the lock. You can't get back in your own house. So, in the 15,000th year of the Asiatic world, if we go to the 15th surah of the Holy Quran, um, a section called the devil's opposition to the righteous.
And surely we created man of sounding clay, of black mud fashioned into shape. And the gin we created before of intensely hot fire. And when thy Lord said to the angels, I'm going to create a mortal of sounding clay, of black mud fashioned into shape so when I have made him complete and breathe into him of my spirit fall down making obeisance to him so the angels made obeisance all of them together but Iblis did it not he refused to be with those who made obese. That means he, he got out of the ranks. You wonder why people leave. They refuse to be with you if you're in submission. So he refused to be with those who made obeisance. He left a whole company of them. So Allah said, O oh, Iblis, what is the reason? That thou art not with those who may. What you lead the rank for? Why come you don't come to class no more? What's the reason? That thou art not with those who make obeisance. And he said, I'm not going to make obeisance to a mortal whom thou hast created of sounding clay, of black mud fashioned into shape. Now that's outright rebellion, isn't it? Yes, sir. Here's the Lord, he gave the command, you just outright telling him, he ain't even got to figure it out. You outright tell him, I'm not doing that. So then the Lord's response is, then go forth, for surely thou art driven away, and surely on thee is a curse to the day of judgment. So then the rebel will now, He's, he's talking back. He said, well, my Lord, respite me to the time when they are raised. And the Lord said, surely thou art of the respited ones till the period of time made known. See, when you start talking about the time made known, now you're talking about the time and what must be done. Folk won't know it unless it's made known. Then he said, my Lord, as thou hast judged me erring, I shall certainly make evil fair seeming to them on earth, and I shall cause them all to deviate. Um, the history of the black world's breakdown. Words from the Honorable Elijah Muhammad sent to the minister's class in the wilderness of North America, October 2nd, 1935. History of all our studies is the most attractive and best qualified to reward our research as it develops the springs and motives of human actions and displays the consequences of circumstances which operate most powerfully on the destinies of the human being. Second, it stands true that we, the lost found nation in the wilderness of North America, have not applied ourselves to the study of history, but rather to folly. We had lots of bread of idleness, and when an effort was made to the above effect toward the study of history, it was to our detriment by not knowing what history was valuable to aid us in the knowledge of our own nation. The wise man is the one who has made a careful study of the past events of 
ancient and modern history. The knowledge of the future is judged by the knowledge of the past. There are men born with the gift of prophecy, while some are trained into the knowledge of intense studies of the past events of history. So when we started this talk off, we talked about how the angels, sometimes called elders, and in the language of the nation of Islam, scientists, studied the home of Islam, which is the planet Earth. And in that study of the planet Earth, its weight and its rotation, even as the early ancient Greeks drew imaginary lines on the earth to determine longitude and latitude and degree that you could pinpoint something. So the wise scientists um, of the black world were able to read into our planet and into the thinking of the people on our planet and study the longitude and the latitude of the thoughts and actions of people and they could pinpoint what was going to come to pass. And they use immutable laws that are unchanging set by the originator of the heavens and the earth. So these laws constitute our existence in the universe. They can't change. Any and everyone that comes after the originator, they have to live by these laws. It is only now that it can be changed. So the Quran says of him, as it talks about him coming from the beginning, that he begets not, nor is he begotten. There is none comparable to this one that raised up the honorable Elijah Muhammad. That's right. So now, there has to be a breaking up and demolition work going on. Since the human being has been raised up and nurtured in lies and falsehood and that, all that's got to be broken up. See, that's our work right now. When you say I'm standing with Minister Louis Farrakhan, you're saying I'm standing committed to the work of breaking up the old mind. You can't attract me back to something that's old if I'm following a God that's going to make all things new. Sixty-six trillion years ago, the Honorable Boy Elijah Muhammad said, God hid his face from man. Now we can take this and let it alone. But no one has taught you the way the Honorable Boy Elijah Muhammad has taught you. No one has done this. And there's no theologian that has ever taken you back that far. They're afraid to go back that far. That's why they have submitted to scientists saying that giant lizards were ruling the planet. Well, why doesn't God talk about them? You got giant animals walking over the earth. They bigger than elephants and everything. And God don't have no mention of them. And his word. So when was this period? Well, you won't find it in the Bible because it's prehistoric. It's before history. So the dinosaurs got here before God. So you can't have it both ways. Mm. Yeah, so 
you say he Allah is one. Well, if you said you got a God, this 25,000, another one, that 25,000, them. How you going to say he's one? Because the messenger said, because there's only one at a time. How about that? Man, you got to find another lifetime to catch the honorable Elijah Muhammad. <laughs> Master this thing. Yeah, so... What has happened this past 6,000 years? Well, first, let me go back. We already knew in the year one of this 25,000 year cycle, we already knew that our dissatisfaction would ultimately produce a form. We were already determined to do something because we knew that the strength, the righteousness of the original people, we are so right that our wrong is always in check. That's why you'll find in the hadith of uh, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, when it comes to deeds, that if you think of one evil deed, you got the thought of evil, but you refrain from doing the evil that you thought of, Allah counts it as one good deed. Look at that math. That's your righteousness putting evil in check because evil starts in the mind. Does that make sense? So the evil that was thought of because you checked it and didn't do it, Allah counts that as one good deed. Wow. So we had evil in check, which gives you a knowledge of your righteousness. But what you don't have is a knowledge of your evil. There's a dark side to the original nature. So the scientists now, they want, they want to uh, expand the knowledge of self. So they decide that this dark side needs a form. But in order to give form to the dark side, it's got to be derived from uh, a germ that's weaker. So the man is going to be weaker. Meaning, he's weak to righteousness. He can talk it, but he can't walk it. We are a living example of that. The Constitution doesn't even need to be changed. That's why you don't see black folks fighting to get white people to change the Constitution. They're fighting to try to get white folks to live by it. We didn't write it. They wrote it. So the problem is not the Constitution. The problem is the people that wrote it don't even live by it. And if you try to live by it or I try to live by it, we got a problem with them. Um, so in the year one, we saw that in 8,400, according to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad's teaching to us, we saw that this evil would have form. That I, we would give form to the dissatisfaction of not knowing this dark side of the original name. This is our history. So, um, in seeing this, we don't want this man of evil to have so much science and wisdom to work with, so we start covering it up. See, I don't know. I know from when I came in the nation of Islam that the deserts are 4,861,000 square miles, but I don't know what it was before. But the deserts now 
are perfect cover to hide cities that original people have once built. And so deep in the earth are cities and that are represented of ancient civilization. See, we are an ancient people. We let people treat us like we just got here, but we're ancient to this planet. There's no place on this planet where we would be buried, where the earth would reject our bodies. We are made from it. Come on, somebody. So as we begin to hide our wisdom, what does this do to the succeeding generations of original people when you don't see the evidence of the work and evidence of your greatness? It starts blinding us to this wisdom, doesn't it? And so this man now uh, is made and comes into existence in this 6,000 year period. This 6,000 years, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us, represents a vacuum in our history. We were talking about that, how the vacuum sucks out, you know, oxygen. When you don't get oxygen in the brain, eventually the brain will die. And the breathing we talked about is not these nostrils, but the ears, hearing the word of God now. So for 6,000 years, the original man, he can't breathe. You say, but the word of God is here. We could hear it. Yeah, but you're hearing it from a man that has poisoned the word with an imperialist idea and has caused the human family to think that God has favored him over all members of the human family. That they are the chosen people. If you go back, you'll see that the real problem that Jews had with the Honorable Louis Farrakhan was not anything about Adolf Hitler because it was Nate Hintoff of the Village Voice. He's the one that brought Hitler up in the first place. I remember it like yesterday. We weren't even at Mount Mariam. We, were, we had recently got the final call building. And they said, Farrakhan is a black Hitler. Anybody remember that? Because Hitler had soldiers on the street. Right? He had a Gestapo. He had the brown shirts. And he had the Waffen SS. So when they saw the fruit of Islam growing, and Farrakhan preaching, Nate Hintoff said, he's like a black Hitler. And the minister was responding to that. Said, well, they bring up Hitler. There. Well, Hitler was a great man. He said, but he was a wicked man. So you modify that. He said, so he was wickedly great. And then he said, don't compare me with your wicked leaders. Now, the minister has never raised no money to put on a movie about Adolf Hitler, but Jews have. Do you think white people go and put money out to make a movie about Adolf Hitler without Jews scrutinizing what they're going to put out about him? So they got something to do with every production of Adolf Hitler. Not us, not black people. When Jesse Owens outran Adolf Hitler's Aryan in the Olympics, and hit, they said, well, Hitler wouldn't shake his hand. But Jesse Owens said, Adolf Hitler didn't snub me. It was Franklin Delano Roosevelt that snubbed me. Because every other winner in the Olympics was invited to the White House except for Jesse Owens. Why are you talking like this, Brother Rodney? Hell, I'm trying to get ready for this fight. 
because we're already in it. You can win this fight with truth and some facts that they can't deny. You can bring up your opinion all day long, but, but facts is not an opinion. And the actual facts are facts that can't be changed. See, a white people ruling over black people right now, that's a fact, but the minister said that's a false fact. When the black man really wake up, when the black woman really wakes up, he'll no longer be doing that. That's a change of facts. So Nate Hintoff put that in the Village Voice, paper that comes out of New York, sells all over the country, and the minister responded to that. So this little white woman on The View keeps talking about any man that calls Hitler a great man. There were some earthquakes that killed a lot of people. They said it was the great earthquake. Didn't mean it was good. Come on now. Alexander the Great. And what was so great about him? See, he was a conqueror. He went and took over other people's country. He'd go in another man's house and take it over. But you called him the great. Didn't mean he was good. Yeah. So after the vacuum in our history, if you look at the language, the first thing we need to look at is, he said, you made a man of sounding clay. See, a man being made out of the clay of the earth, if the man is given a sound that travels at 1,120 feet per second, that means the man is given a language. The first man, the original man, he was given a language. That's the language that he communicates in. Well, what language is that? Obviously, it's the language of the righteous. And because we have been made other than ourselves, we've, we've been unacquainted with that language. That's why he said, my uncle cannot talk his own language. He don't know his righteousness, so he don't talk about it. He's being made over like his enemy, as the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, we are practitioners of the evil of the man that's been over us. So how can we get past this? Well, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said it. we got to start making a careful study of past events, both ancient and modern, so we can determine what we're in. When you write a history ahead of yourself and then somebody blinds you, you don't know what you're walking into. It's already written. And we're walking into it and so we don't know. We talked about this deportation of Moon and how a whole new world of thought came on the planet. This is symbolic language. If the reality is hidden from you, then you got a veil over reality. Okay, so symbolic language, when we don't know our language, we don't know how to break down symbols, okay? So the world is stitched together with landmarks that are really symbols showing us something about our ancient and modern journey. But when we're unable to read symbols, we don't know. We're, we're becoming more acquainted with that now. You actually got folks that can take the dollar bill and teach on it now because it's full of symbols. It's telling a deeper story than you could ever imagine. It's more than what we're spending down the street because it's filled with symbols. And when the Million Man March took place, and uh, six uh, channel uh, ABC, I think it was Cokie Roberts and Sam Donaldson, were interviewing the Honorable Louis Farrakhan. They said, you know, you brought out so many 
uh, and you're obviously there to address the concerns of black men in America, but you were talking about the height of the Washington Monument and the reflecting pool and all that. What was all that about, Farrakhan? Why are you talking? He said that was to let the wise people in this country know that I know their secrets. Because, see, when, you, when you're a person that can't decode symbols, then the person that made the symbol got a secret now that they can keep from you until you learn how to decode symbols. So now that the Son of Man has been raised up, we can decode all symbols. And we can give you a definition behind the veil that's been put over a reality. Because every symbol is pointing toward a reality. If you can decode it, you'll know the reality that it's pointing toward. Well, you know, I'm going to go down the street and get me some medicine. When you get to the clinic, there's a symbol up there. You'll see a golden scepter with two serpents wrapped around it. Symbol. But do you know how to decode it? Because when you don't, like I didn't, hell, then there's a whole history behind that symbol that I don't know about. But in the church, pastor was saying it, but he didn't know it. He said, Jesus said, as Moses lifted the serpent of the wilderness, so shall the Son of Man be lifted. He said, well, when, when did Moses lift the serpent of the wilderness? See, that's a hidden history. The Musa that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us of, he went into a place called Europe. The Europe you and I know got cities and trains and planes and systems and banking and everything like that. But long before these cities and things, there was nothing but hillsides. And all of our historians that did not bow down to the uh, white man's revision of history, like Sheikh Ante Diop and John Henry Clark, Joseph uh, Johannan, George James, and others. See, they didn't bow to the white man's history. They let us know that in ancient times there was no Europe. And we know there was no Europe from the Honorable Elijah Muhammad because when we ran them across, they had to live in caves. There were no towns. Are you all with me on this? See, because if you stand in, on this foundation, think it over. So we start hiding things from him. And the minister said, we couldn't hide what was in the heavens, but we knew it would take him thousands of years to get to our wisdom in the heavens. So the Quran teaches you that we made the heavens uh, like a structure and set a canopy over it. And we allowed him to get a peep into the heavens before his world goes out. Well, it's about to go out, and he's had his peep into the heavens. The last thing I read after he took a peep in USA Today last month, it said they have determined that life can be sustained on seven planets. Go in the problem book of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. That's right. Seven inhabited planets. Each planet corresponding with one of the ounces of the brain of the original man. And the one half of ounce represents the moon. It's a deep science. But it's all necessary to wake us up. We're not trying to wake up to go back and be like the original man was. He wants to wake us up and then he says, in order to take us forward, another book is required. And he said his teacher had already written that book, but we cannot teach that book until the 
power of the present world rulers is broken. Okay, so we got language and we got symbolic language that we can break down now because the language of the original man as the honorable Elijah Muhammad said of religion religion, true religion should define everything in front of you of Allah's creation none of God's creation should be a mystery to you if you got the right religion there's no such thing as a religion well the Lord works in mysterious ways and you just leave everything to mystery it ain't supposed to be a mystery to God. When is he going to tell us? So, in the Quran, he says, uh, you've, you've, you've judged me to be erring. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to come before them from behind them, from the left and from the right, I'm going to make evil fair seeming. And cause them to deviate. Notice what he doesn't say. I'm going to destroy them. He don't have that authority. They don't have the authority to destroy us. But they can cause us to deviate. The original man, the original woman, is constructed in truth. And righteousness, and that is the real nature of the original man, is Islam. Islam is the culture of the perfect man. And Islam is the nature of God. And it is the nature in which he has created man. And what man has done is deviated from the nature that God created him in. And so, because he's deviated from the nature that God has created him in, man does not know his nature. Come on. And even though he doesn't know his nature, he thinks he knows religion. So what Allah is doing right now is, since the man don't know his nature, he's reintroducing seen the nature of the original man to him in the form of a religion called Islam. That's why religion is important. Because we didn't start out with a church or a mosque, a Bible or a Quran. We started out with a created being who related to his God. All this other stuff came afterward. So when you cause a man who's constructed in righteousness, a woman that's constructed in righteousness, when you can cause them to deviate, then the law that they were created in, they step outside of that law. They become an outlaw to their own created form. When we were at Savior's Day doing our workshop, I said, that's why you got... Uh, it's easy to do mass incarceration of us. Because I said, because we're not real crooks. We want to be straight up thug, sawed off gangster or whatever, but we're not real crooks. That's why we always get caught. We on the camera. We got you. We saw you. Brother Rodney, they're doing us wrong as mass incarceration and everything. You, you're only good at righteousness. You're not good at being a crook. Oh, if, if, if they, they put a, if Obama had cheated on his wife with a porn star, come on now, cheated on the other wives and just imagine they would have roasted him. You know he would have been impeached. They would be holding press conferences with all these women and everything, you know, because we're good at righteousness. As a black man and a black woman, look how he and Michelle handled it. They were good at righteousness eight years with no scandal. 
I mean, you ain't got a president of the United States of America that has gone four years without scandal. Hell, they came in scandalous. But they good at being crooks. So not only do they keep going on crooked, but they get written of good in history because they writing their own history. What's upsetting that is Louis Farrakhan. If you make a careful review of ancient events and modern events, I challenge someone to show me an occasion where white people suffered from the oppression of someone else other than themselves. See, so you, you can't show me where white people suffered under the hand of the darker peoples of the earth. And the only history you have of them suffering is the Jews in Germany, but the Germans were white and the Jews that they oppressed were white. So what's the big deal about Minister Louis Farrakhan? There are other people who talk against the Jews also. A lot of you don't realize that when Malcolm X died, they, they, it was a headline that the anti-Semite is dead. No, when Farrakhan said, you are the chosen people, where did he get that from? I mean, can we stand on that? That they're not the chosen people, that we are the chosen people in that? See, because the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that we're hidden under the history of another people. So he said, everywhere you read about the children of Israel, it's really dealing with the tribe of Shabazz. That's what I'm standing on. That everything in the scripture is dealing with us and that it's telling our story. And, and the more I try to stick with scripture, the more I'm understanding what I'm walking in right now. It's what Minister Louis Farrakhan represents. Now, there, you'll see him on television. You'll see him uh, in the papers condemning him. But when Billy Graham saw him, he hugged him and kissed him. And Billy Graham used the words, they got a stranglehold on our country. How could they do that? Central banking. And see, most Americans, if you stop them on the street and say, explain monetary policy to me. See, we can explain the political system. We can talk about the economic system. And even the social order or the social system and to some degree, the religious system, most Americans can't talk about monetary system. We don't know how money works. But isn't it interesting that Jesus got into it with people who were dealing with monetary policy? And that was the thing that took him to the cross. See, either we're going to wake up or die in our sleep. The only chance we have is Minister Louis Farrakhan. And the reason that we're presenting, we're making a bad presentation to the world, they're saying, look at what you guys are doing to each other. You're killing each other and everything. It's because we're outlaws. We're trying to live and operate outside of the law that we were created in. And when you live like that, black man, that's your kryptonite. Can't nobody beat Superman. It's the kryptonite that 
that takes away his superpowers that makes them overcome him. So when Master Farad Muhammad came, he ain't looking for Superman. Stop trying to be so big. He looking for Clark Kent. A man that's been broken down. See, we know so much, are we so super? The hell with FOI class. I don't need that. I know my way around. Go ahead. 196 million, 940,000 square miles. Let's see how you fare. Know so damn much. See, the, the, the temples of Muhammad become the phone booth. That's where Clark Kent changes clothes. He said, damn, man. Man was, man was on heroin and crack and everything. He went in the phone booth. And Farrakhan set up. I can't deal with him now. Every time I say something, he got an answer. Yeah, he's been given the answers. When our fathers um, put out the word to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and gave, they already predicted the arguments that would come up right. in relation to this message. Right, right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And it just tells you something they will say, and when they say, then you say. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm gonna tell you what they're gonna say, and when they bring that up, you bring this up. Right. Because it's our history. So one man is made of black mud, fashion in the shape. That means he's created with the right stuff. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said the black mud means the sperm of the black nation. He's already created with it, but you could have the right stuff but not know how to use it. You could have the right stuff and it can stay undeveloped. So he set up training for the men who belong to Islam in North America, fashion them into shape. And then after I have done that, and give him what he needs so he can love his God the way his God needs to be loved. See, once I've completed him and I put my spirit in him, then everybody got to fall in under the black man of the planet Earth. But you know what? He never will. He won't do it and God knows he won't do it. That's why he's setting him up to kill him. The white man's world is built on a weak foundation. Falsehood is a weak foundation. When you have what's false and you don't have what's true, then when you want to take somebody down, you never take them down with truth because you don't have the truth and the truth ain't on your side. So you have to put up stuff like, we need you to repudiate him. We need you to condemn him. They were having a tough time this time after Savior's Day. Finding people, they was hounding people. See, when somebody puts out something and it sounds real extreme, you ain't got to go ask nobody to repute it. Somebody will just come out and say, man, I condemn this. <laughs> somebody just say, well, far kind of, I ain't with that. I don't like this. But look what happened. They went around hounding people <laughs> to get someone to condemn his remarks. And all they had to say was, whatever I have to say to minister, about Minister Farrakhan's remarks, I'll say to him and not to you. 
That's all they had to do. And see, that's, see, the minister, he doesn't do slack talking gossip. So you can't bring him negativity about one person and then he just take what you say on face value. Whatever you say to him, you have to be ready to say it twice because you know what he's going to do? He's going to go get the person you was talking about and make you repeat what you said. Most of us can't do that. That's why I know we're not ready for this fight. Because when Yaqub instructed, he, he wasn't even alive no more. He gave them some books and said, when you get rent a room in their house, go and say to one that the other one said something about him. Get them all fired up against that person based on a lie. That if all three parties had got together, so finally... We got to fighting and killing one another. Notice they went to the leadership. And the imam said, wait a minute. This didn't start. So these folks got among us. So the, the thing to do is we put them out in the worst part of the earth. Kept the best part preserved for ourselves ever since we made it. I was watching... Um, a segment on the weekend of the March on Washington in 1963. They have a lot of different documentaries, but this one was really interesting. Because what people don't realize is, before 1963, and they chose that year because it would it'd be exactly 100 years after Abraham Lincoln had written the Emancipation Proclamation. Um, there had never been a gathering that large of black people. So they were very afraid. John F. Kennedy was extremely concerned that there would be violence with that many black people coming together. So uh, they showed the people out there, came to about 250,000. And then they showed little red circles. They had planted marshals, undercover agents, all through the crowd. So you saw all these red circles and everything. So some people wasn't there to hear Dr. King or uh, A. Philip Randolph or many of the others. And the only reason Dr. King's address lasted so long, everybody thought the press would be gone. And so nobody wanted to be the last person on the program, so Dr. King took the last slot. He said, well, I'll go last, you know. And I'll just talk to the people. The press will be gone. But he was supposed to speak six minutes. It turned out to be about 18. And really, he didn't get to give all his speech. He departed from his text because of Mahalia Jackson. Saying, tell him about the dream. Tell him about the dream. So he had already talked about that in Detroit, Michigan. So they... Uh, he began to go back over that, and then they tried to recalibrate and recharacterize his address. Right, right. As a, I have, he, to this day, they said it's a I have a dream speech. He wasn't dreaming, that wasn't why he went to Washington. He went because he said the Negro has presented a check to the great vaults of opportunity in the United States of America, and the check has come back marked insufficient funds. He said, the Negro can't cash a check on opportunity. In 1963, there were some professions we weren't even allowed to work in. Just because you was black, you couldn't even, it wasn't that they rejected your application, you didn't get to fill out an application. No, we don't hire niggers. Niggers are not allowed in this profession. That profession. Yeah. But my point is, with all them people stationed throughout the crowd, it's, that's how you do, uh, what was this building in Philadelphia they took down? They imploded it. But the way you implode something, you, you carefully set charges up on the inside so that when they go off, it causes the thing to collapse in on itself. That's how they're trying to take us down. 
They've planted people in among us to start trouble, to cause the FOI and the MGT to collapse in on themselves. Y'all better listen to me, because you're in this fight. You think this man is going to fight you clean and stay over there with his swastika? Hell no. He's going to find him a Negro to put right in among us. And if you're not trained, they'll whisper something in your ear about one and the other, and pretty soon, you'll be fighting and killing one another. Go and look at many of the interviews of Malcolm X. And you'll see what people were doing on the inside. And they were crediting all that to Mr. Muhammad when he had nothing to do with that. And they're using it today so that people, so when I look and see that 573,000 people done watch this, mostly black people, that means they're affected by it. So he's in the interview saying, Mr. Muhammad's children are living good. See, that'll always get a Negro. Somebody else is supposed to be living good. And then it make you think they're living good off you. They had an article with the minister teaching and two security were standing with him calling us the counter-revolutionaries. Because we ride around in nice cars and different things like this. Are you supposed to look like a hobo? Is that, is that supposed to get, you know, we're the only people teaching. Just listen to me now. We're the only people teaching that there is no heaven after you die up in the sky. I already told you, close your eyes and tell the white man what you think heaven looks like. And when you get through describing it, he'll go build that place right on earth. Give you a brochure and charge you to go there. Hell, he ain't waiting to go in the sky for nothing. So if you teach that there is no heaven in the sky, but it's on earth while you live, you should start looking like heaven. Heaven is an improved situation. You ain't supposed to look like you came. In fact, that would be problematic that you don't look better. Some man tried to front off the minister. I've been with the Honorable Elijah Muhammad for 40 years. He said, brother, I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't tell nobody that. I've been exposed. You gonna tell you gonna tell the world you've been exposed to a matchless wisdom, like, and that's all you got to show for it after forty years. So Paul said it best in the Bible: "Prove all things." The Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us to prove something means to test it. How do you test it? You want to see, does it work? See, we could test Islam, and right at the beginning, evidence was showing. You dropped the cigarettes right away. Alcohol right away. Got off heroin right away. We start cleaning up almost, and with the joy that we receive Islam with, the changes were instant. Come on, somebody. There's evidence. And all you got to do is go back to that space where you had that kind of joy, and you'll see more things happening for you. You ought to look like heaven on earth. After 20 and 30 and 40 years, you shouldn't be trucking along in a hoopty. After 30 and 40 years, 
Peeping out of a little corner apartment and stuff. And if you're going to live in the same place, redo it. Allah redoes his creation. They got programs. They, we got contractors. Redo the place. Hell, that's fighting. So you, you telling me I'm a fool to go with fire. You must be out of your mind believing God is a man. No, I got out of your mind. I'm getting my mind back. Finally, it's all beginning to make sense to me. Let me go on and close out, but look at this. Just a review of history. John Henry Clark said, we have to remember that in ancient times there was no Europe. Now EU means hillsides. And rope is the rope that binds in. None of us ever lived like that. But once you come under his rule, he reduces you to that kind of living. And he binds you in with that. Because we're a managed social group. So he leaves us in spaces and vicinities where he deliberately disinvests. So it starts going down where we are. Then the banks that are around us won't lend us a little money to do substantial home improvements. Pretty soon, it's going down. The character of the people is going down. The morals of the people is shattered in that. You say, hell, I, this is hell. I just want to get out of here. You take 40, 50, 60 grand, and you run with it. The developers take over, and the little place you lived in, now it's worth $500,000, $600,000. That's to ensure that nobody black will move in there to replace you. Even, even some black folks got that kind of money, but you know what? They're not going to spend it for North Philly until they see evidence of more and more change. So he's, he, this man is, is, is moving us out. We were crowded down there at Temple that want to build a stadium down there. And we told them... Uh, we got a perfect place for the stadium, Rittenhouse Square. Right. <laughs> now, when my wife drafted the letter, we didn't realize that the president of Temple, that's where he lived. <laughs> but it's an excellent place for the stadium because Temple has part of their campus down in Center City. So build a stadium. We said build a stadium right there. No, these, these, these bums are trying to crowd out our, our folks right there. They want to close off 15th Street. Right, right. Come on. So we drew a line in the sand just to do something, but, you know, our people got to realize we got to come together. Right. Sit Evelyn Smalls down and say, look, United Bank is black owned. All black people will all come and put our money in here, but don't deny us no loans now to repair our neighborhoods and stuff. Look at Esperanza. They just got a half a million. They're getting ready to get more money, and they're rebuilding the homes of their people, the Latino people, so that they don't have to move out. See, Mr. Muhammad has taught us how to fight without guns. That's why he said, get rid of the guns and all that. You don't know nothing but shoot somebody when you disagree with them. No, we can sit down on people. Close up all these little Chinese places and everything. You can change the landscape. But you can't do that with the Negro mind. You got to get that up. So the minister said at Watergate, black people, this is your last warning. You got to change the way you think and the way you act. The greatest mind, the way we think, the greatest weapon in the white man's hand 
is the thinking of a Negro. Because he always thinks against his own best interests. If we just give that thinking up, his days are numbered. There was no Europe in ancient times. When we were building pyramids, something that they have never been able to duplicate. Why don't they go build one? You tell me, well, oh, the white man built skyscrapers. We built pyramids. We built ancient houses. Look how many thousands of years have passed. And they're still standing. Wind and dust storms. Extremely hot days and cold nights. Still standing. Shoot, they, we, we need rebuilding in Philadelphia. Right. Stuff he done built. On, they had to rebuild in Chicago and other places. Things he done built. We got things still standing. We got evidence that a certain wisdom was here, and we're trying to get that wisdom back. That's what we're being offered by the Honorable Louis Farrakhan. A man who 4,000 years ago was living in the cave, according to the Holy Quran, and he done built what he's built. I don't, I don't laugh at him. He's evidence you can make your own neighborhood a decent place to live in. He took them caves and hillside and built him some train tracks and some towns and villages and everything and some banks. Start moving money around. Built a whole system, built armies. He stayed right there in Europe and did it. Come on now. Yeah. So, um, then our ancient writers found through Dr. Chancellor Williams and others that Western Asia, now look at this, they all still calling every part of this planet Asia. So Chancellor Williams said, in Western Asia, there were great kingdoms in that. We begin to, these lands uh, begin to uh, become depleted of water supply. And after this depletion of water supply, these kingdoms fell. And they're under the sands of the largest desert on the planet, the Sahara Desert. All of this complements what the Honorable Elijah Muhammad has shared with us. And he said, the reason you and I don't see it as Western Asia is because the white man calls it the Middle East. Now how can you be, why are you in the middle of the East? So I'm not just questioning you like I knew it all the time. I'm questioning myself. How could I have gone for that? The Middle East. And then when I was in school taking social studies and geography, they called it Asia Minor. And I never asked where was Asia Major. So as it turns out, uh, Saudi Arabia or Saudi Arabia as it turns out on the other side of the Red Sea Judea which the Romans named Palestine that's now called Israel and the Golan Heights that the minister brought up in the press conference at the Watergate. All of that is Northern Africa. See, some of you are looking at me startled. That's why the Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us that the original Hebrews were black. 
And that's why he taught us that the original Arabs were black. And so you got the Klan running around talking about we want to keep the white woman pure. We don't want to sleep with niggers because they'll bastardize our race. You're the only bastard on the planet. <laughs> raping everybody's woman. Planting your seed in every woman and that that's how Egypt turned white. And Egypt didn't turn white in skin color only. Anwar Sadat, who was president of Egypt there in the 70s, right. when they wanted to do a movie about him in America, they chose Lou Gossett Jr. to play Anwar Sadat. And the people of Egypt said, we refuse to even let the film show over here if you let one of them Negroes play him. Now, Sadat looked like he come from North Philly. Of West Philly, huh? Who would you get to play him? See, they poison the earth with this kind of thinking. And if you go uh, 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 and get the tapes of the Honorable Louis Farrakhan, the time and what must be done, he starts showing you how they begin to plant their seed in these planets. They intermix with us. That's how you got these people called the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and the scribes. The Bible, the Protestant Bible is 66 books of history. The first 39 books constitute the Old Testament. The last 27 books deal with the New Testament. In the first 39 books, you'll see David, King, Solomon, King. You'll see the order set up in the temple. You'll see the priests. But it's not till you get to the New Testament in the book of Matthew that you see the Pharisees, the Sadducees. Now, where they come from? See, the whites begin, after they left the caves and the hillsides of Europe, they begin to marry in among the original Hebrews. Come on, somebody. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And then Babylon came and took them into captivity. Babylon made them some Negroes that they could use to try to rule over the righteousness of the children of Israel. That's why Jesus was fighting them. He wasn't fighting the priests. He wasn't even fighting the temple. He was fighting the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and the scribes. He had nothing kind to say about them or to them. Ultimately, they tried to tell him, we're of Abraham's seed. He said, hell, if you was of Abraham's seed, you'd be found doing the works of Abraham. Then he finally identified him. You of your father, the devil. Now, why would he say that, fam? Your father was a liar and he was a murderer from the beginning. What murder is he talking about? The murder of black babies and the, and the keeping of the lighter ones and lying to the mothers about what happened to their children. All of that from the beginning. Yep, Asia Minor. It was under the Greco-Roman Empire that whites began to take the history and the knowledge that they had learned from the ancients and credit it to themselves. It wasn't until to, to the Greco-Roman Empire set up. Before that, you'll find even Aristotle praising the Ethiopians and the great knowledge and wisdom that he was able to extract from them. Philosophy is not even, wasn't even a, a term that started with the Greeks. It was when they learned from our fathers. But to put us all the way to sleep under Rome, 
and you are under a modern day Rome. Because if you study the Roman Empire after it fell, the Romans didn't die. The Romans kept living, so where did they go? Hell, they changed their name to Italians. Those are the Romans. Come on now. They didn't die off. Those are the Romans. And even though they celebrate Columbus Day here, it was Amerigo Vespucci, an Italian explorer or a Roman explorer that they name America after. You're in a modern day Rome. Rome had a Senate and Rome was a republic. Say the Pledge of Allegiance and you'll say to the republic for which it stands. And the president is Caesar. Donald Trump. And so you see a history now, don't you? That we live in an occupied territory. We call it the black community, but it ain't a black community to black people are running it. We're blaming everybody else for gentrification, but I tell you, Malcolm had it right in the ballad of the bullet. He says, see, when you take your dollars and you go out of your community to spend your dollars. And he said, now we're trapped, we're double trapped, because even when you spend your money on the block where you live or the area where you live, you're spending it with a man. Who when the sun goes down, he takes that basket full of money in another part of the town. He says, so when you blame everybody else for running your community down, he said, you run it down yourself when you run your dollars away from each other. And now the economic multipliers in the different ethnic groups, you'll see that their dollar turns from 13 to 26 times. Before it leaves their community, the dollar in the black community doesn't turn one time. By the time you have your first coffee break at 1030, the dollar's gone. That means that all the needs of black people are being met by someone else. That comes from revising history. And when you revise history, you can set new starting points. That's why the Quran talks about you'll know when the calamity comes, it's going to destroy all the old world landmarks. 1619 is a landmark. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And, and the way they teach the history, 1619 is the genesis of black people in this country. That's wrong. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, the good ship Jesus brought the first of our fathers in 1555. By 1619, two generations had passed. They had taken the babies and raised the babies up absent their mother and father. Yes. Right. Why are they blind, deaf, and dumb? I can hardly believe that. Yes. That's right. Unless they were made blind, deaf, and dumb. Well, they were made that when they were babies. That's right. That's right. That's right. Not the grown people. The grown people get your problem. That's why you had so many slave revolts. The docile Negro that you saw was a child raised up that didn't know any different. Right, right. That's why it's so damn hard to get us out of what we're in right now. Yes. And, and when you get used to, okay, we'll be separated from you and everything, they start integrating with you. All the HBCUs got white folks in them now. First they wanted you separated and in your own colleges and everything. Did you know that 80% of black leadership comes from the HBCUs? They got to they they stem that tide. So they're trying to 
recalibrate now. They didn't plan on this population profile. We're destroying all the old landmarks. So finally, um, the Pope of Rome put out a papal or edict that allowed for Portugal and Spain uh, to take all the infidels, that means somebody that have not accepted, um, their rule. And even if you had, he got a station for you. And when the church gave them permission to do with us as they will, they feel like they doing God a favor. And they could do evil without uh, feeling convicted because the church is behind them. That's why the Honorable Louis Farrakhan teaches you he had an attitude already that he was supreme. What he didn't have was a belief system that could support that uh, attitude. He had to use education so that the each succeeding generation coming out would share the views and the values of the generation that preceded them. But he also needed to take religion and use religion in a way that he could sanitize his funky idea about how to treat other human beings in the name of Jesus Christ. So he poisoned it with an imperialist thought. We have so much more to talk on about the history of black people. It's important to me because if you're going to stand with Minister Farrakhan in this day, you need to know what you're standing on. Whatever it is, he obviously completely believes. And he said this. He said, they have sifted us, and they saw that they could not change the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. They've sifted us, and they saw they can't change him. But what about the rest of us? See, the only way, you know, we make it, we got to become convinced about the outcome of things now. So the way to understand what you're in right now is to understand what was before you. Because he's going to do everything to make evil fair seeming to you now. Because he wants to disqualify you for a great destiny that's already been charted out for you. We're not, we're not destined to stay like this. This is why you can't get most black folks to get out and fight because they think, well, you know, Temple's going to do what it's going to do. White folks going to do what they're going to do. And we don't have no power against it. And, and once we become convinced of that, we embrace the spirit of defeat. Then there's no fight left in us. That's just where they want us. And sometimes somebody can have you so completely mastered and shut down that you just, you just drop all your defenses and you submit. So watch this. They're going to use anti-Semitism. And they're going to they're light a fire under the LGBT uh, community to come after the minister. This isn't over yet. This is just the tip of the iceberg. They're testing the wisdom and the courage level of the nation. And the black world in general. They have to already have a plan on how to take us apart. The thing is, can it work? 
And you know the end game, the Quran said, is to make them, cause them all to deviate. He can't make you deviate because he's made the saying here, I had no authority over you except I called you and you came. Blame me not, he says. And I know that if all those people that caved in would have stood their ground, he would have fled from them. If you resist the devil, he'll flee from you. But fear, among all the impediments we have, fear, the messenger said, is number one. Fear of losing a job. That's something to be afraid of. But something more to be afraid of is the destruction of this world and you on the wrong side of history. If you believe it. Fear of losing some position. You like the position you have among people, but they'll kick you out. But that's better. Especially if you believe that your God got a better position for you. Just waiting on you. Yeah. yeah. No, people that have worked hard and achieved something, they're going to try to scare you. We're taking that away from you. If you don't hardly have anything, it's easy to stand. You know? You, if, you, if you're not trying to improve yourself or get anything else, you don't feel you have anything. Ain't nothing to test you on. But God got something to test you on. Because he'll try us in wealth and poverty. And believe me, behind all of this is the hand of our God who's testing all of us. Thank you for listening as I greet you in peace. I salam alaykum. All praise is due to Allah. We are, we are, um, we're, we're, we're always happy to see us come out to hear some of what we've been blessed to see and to and extract from the life-giving teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Is there anybody out for their first time, never been out with us before? Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, we, um, we, are, we are always filled with joy for the opportunity to share with you some of what we've been getting from the life-giving teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And for you who are out for your first time in that, uh, how many of you really feel that what you're hearing, does it make sense? Do you think it's good for us as a people? I mean, um, let me just see by a show of hands if we can do that. If you think it's good for us as a people, thank you so much. Praise be to Allah. The most important question I could ask uh, is, as the Honorable Louis Farrakhan is extending an invitation, to Islam and if you make a note of what we said today we don't see Islam as just some organized religion where you join in the mosque as opposed to the church we see it as the nature of us so at in the nature of us minister Farrakhan said he never left the church and when he goes in the church he doesn't try to get them to leave the church to come to the mosque he's trying to get the church to speak in its prophetic voice because the church got power if it go back to that word and not compromise on that word. So his invitation to us is, is how many of you would join up with him right here in the city of Philadelphia? And you can do that right here at mosque number 12 just by shaking my hand and sitting down with the brother and sister that can help you learn how you can do that and become part of a spiritual army. to help the Honorable Louis Farrakhan. And believe me, by helping him, we're helping ourselves. I mean, we got, we, we got a stake in this. He's not in this by himself. But, but there are those of us that can bear witness. I mean, I'm going on 37 years being with him. And believe me, my worst day 
in 37 years was better than any day I had before I came to him. Why? Because there's enough light at the end of my tunnel. I, in 37 years, I have never had to sit down and say, woe is me, I don't know what I'm going to do. The God that he represented to me, I turned there, and I'm coming up with something. But I ain't never left not knowing what I was going to do when trouble came. Even if it's just seek refuge in Allah. So this is your opportunity. Uh, you can come on up, shake my hand uh, as a little helper to the Honorable Louis Farrakhan. I invite you to come on up. Male or female, this is, this is your opportunity to come and join Farrakhan's army. In the name of God. We are thankful we're all over the country and all over the world right now. How you doing, black man? What's your name, sir? James. Brother James is with us. Come on, put your hands together for Brother James. Thank you so much. Brother, you can have a seat right there. Brother David's going to help you. If there's any women, you know you're females, but you're fighters, right? I mean, we ain't had a fight where the black woman ain't been with us. And she ain't always been treated right, but she never run out on the black man in his fight. You, you, if you know of a fight the black man's been in where the black woman has not stood with him, write it down on a piece of paper so I can have it uh, before I leave the mosque today. But I know that's a blank sheet because the black woman always been with us. Female but fight. She's a sister, but she's a soldier, right? A woman but a warrior. And believe me, that's why the Honorable Louis Farrakhan asked black women to stay home when we had the Million Man March in 1995. Because he said, sister, you've done enough. You've brought us this far. It's time for us to stand up and be men. Is that right? So if there's any women, you know, every Saturday morning at 10 a.m., the women of God meet right here. I can't answer for why the mosque is not packed with the soldiers that say they love Minister Farrakhan, because right now he's under attack. You really should be present and accounted for. I, I, I'm trying to figure it out. God knows by the time he leaves, we're going to disappear. Every soldier should be out just to find out, are there any marching orders? Why? Because when he's under attack, you're under attack. You might not see it, but they're attacking you when they attack him. He's the best in black men, the best in black women. He's the best in any black person on this planet right now. And when they attack your, uh, your best, all of us are under attack. We need to be present and accounted for. So we thank you all for coming out and doing that. We want to take up a public offering. We need your help today. And all of us that haven't finished the Savior's Day gift, you know, we're almost there. I saw us inching and pinching, but I think we're slowing down. I hope we put something on it today. I, I didn't get to talk again with the secretary, but I looked last night and it looked like we're just not knocking the door down on the 100,000, but we're almost there. And I know there's some of us that didn't complete so this is our opportunity now to do that. 